Hello and welcome to uh, this tutorial with attractortips.com. During this tutorial, I'm going to show you how I beat grid uh, the tracks here. So let me clear these down. Um, simply um, to beat grid tracks, um, you need to use this tick function here. I have my settings set to snap and quantize so that um, when you uh, click into the track, it actually quantizes and snaps to the beat. So I have these settings set up here. Um, this tick sound is actually routed through um, the monitor uh, settings, so that comes through the headphones um, as default. So um, I've got this wired up um, as if you guys are listening into the headphones as well. So how do we beat grid? So let's grab uh, this track here. As soon as you put a track into the deck or bring it into Tractor, depending on how you've got it set up, it will automatically analyze the, uh, the track. Once the track's been analyzed, I'm going to lay its best guess for a beat grid down at the front, um, somewhere near the front or the first beat. Um, that therefore lays down this entire grid. Um, now, uh, to test whether that's done it perfectly or not, we just need to listen to the track with this tick rolling. So we'll go into the headphones. I'm going to press this in here. We're going to press sync so that it syncs to the main clock. Um, I'm going to turn it up for you guys. And then we press the tick sound here. So you can hear that tick. It doesn't always get it right or dead on. So this is where the old school style of DJing comes in. And you have to fine tune it using these two buttons here to move left and right to make sure that tick is in time with the beat. So we just get that sorted out. You can also have a visual representation if you look at the lines and the beat, um, seeing if they're lining up. But you really want to use your ears for this. Um, if you go too far, you'll hear the tick go out. So that's gone out. So we just go back, and if you go past it again this way, you realize it goes out again. And then you've got to get that sweet spot in the middle where that tick is dead on the beat. So it's easier to do in the headphones, you can hear it better. That sounds pretty good, it might be slightly off there. And you can play with it, like turn the tick off and then on again to see if it's in time. So I may just move it a little bit more other way. Okay, that's pretty good. That will do. Um, it's easier in the headphones. You can hear it more precisely. Um, plus, when you've got it wired up nicely, you can uh, fade in the headphones between the main uh, main out and the headphones, so you can gauge the volume of the tick, so it's easier to hear. So you can also test if that's worked out by grabbing a track that you uh, already had beat gridded. Um, let's go with this one here, and we'll play this in the headphones, and we'll sync it, and we'll play the one we just played. We can press some loops to see if it works. That sounds pretty dead on to me. So that is a brief guide to beat gridding. Once you've beat gridded, it, sorry, beat gridded a track, you can press this lock button here. Locks it down um, so that you can't change the beat grid by accident. Um, and it shows up this lock right here when you've done that. Um, so this method works for majority of electronic music. It's mainly produced on computers, so it's all um, fairly in time and standard 4-4. Um, if you're dealing with music that wasn't um, generated on a computer and it's a bit more of a natural sort of rhythm to it, um, you would get involved with these um, buttons here uh, to change the beat grid a little bit more finely, but that's for another tutorial. Hopefully that's uh, helped you out. Thanks for watching.